Welcome to RC Industry. Hey, it's Rick here. The old Dodge has made it back home. Um, still running really good if you watched the prior video where we put the uh, electronic ignition in that single wire GM style I call it electronic ignition my it's working fantastic but as I figured the charging system once again has went out um, these Dodges in my opinion have crappy you know charging systems so what we're going to do today is we are going to take this uh, charging system and we're going to convert it over to a one wire Wilson Alton, or as Vice Grip Garage would call it a a whirly thing or whatever it is he calls it so I don't know if you can see up in there but not very good huh Alright. So you can see here is the new alternator. I've got it sitting on there. We're kind of mocking it up here. We had to, uh, let me take you off here and show you. We had to bend this bracket actually opposite because on the, you know, Chrysler alternators are thin. So this bracket actually bent back like this. So the new bracket, I got it bent and we that was easy enough. Be aware that when you pull this bolt and this bolt out, you get water out of it, or antifreeze in this case, because that's what we have in it. So I had to get some buckets down here. And uh, so now we have uh, this. This is in the right place. We're in line here. Uh, so we've got to come up with some shims that go across this part right here so that the alternator doesn't want to slide back because like right now it'll slide back see we don't want that we want it out to that direction the big thing that we're going to have to modify here is this whirly gig mount adjuster thingy my bobby so this bracket hits this if you try to you know put it down on there you can't and of course then it's not long enough so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cardboard and we're going to mock us up a piece and then um, I'm going to see if I can sweet talk my friend Kent into uh, fixing this for me but if he can't I'll take it over here to the machine shop and have one made. I'm sure there's probably a bracket out there someplace that would work but I don't know where that would be at so we're just going to make what we have. Now the other thing we're going to do here, and this will probably be a couple part series or a, I might film it in different days, but um, I'm going to tape all these wires up on the original harness and get them up out of the way. And I'm going to unhook all that junk back there because we're not using any of that anymore. And then we're going to run one wire from here and one wire from the ground terminal back here on the back of the alternator right there and I'm going to run those up and across make a little wire loom thing comes across here we'll stop right here and we'll hook the negative up to this and then we're going to run on around here and we're going to slip the the positive in under here so it senses battery voltage and then it will keep this battery charged as the battery gets lower the battery will charge back up and it will be regulated internally by this Wilson alternator which looks a lot like a GM alternator but you know that's the name on it so we'll see anyway that's what we're going to do here so I'm going to get this template drawn up the way I want it and I'll show you more okay got this drawn out the way I want it so I'm just going to simply cut this out and you know it's always good to go into the wife's sewing box and get her good scissors out because this stuff really cuts well so uh, just a little note um, no I actually I actually didn't do that but um, I'm not saying I haven't before okay. Boy, the mosquitoes, goodness gracious. 
sweat flies or sweat bees or something. Jeez. Okay, so this bracket will now set like this and swing up in there like so. I think we'll cut this out just a little more. And we're going to cut this out a little more because it's a little bit wide. And let's see how that fits down in there. Line that whole hole up. And that, my friend, will work. Okay. All right. So you can see that by pivoting that right there, like so, that will be out of the way of this cooling fin on this Delco style alternator made by Wilson. <laughs> okay. All right. Gonna go see if I can get this bracket made. Show you more. Okay. So what we got here is once we get that bracket made up, and I've got my place here to show where this end needs to go, and then we will have to add on some metal, and then around to here. So, but also, if you look at the way it's the end, this is curved. So we're going to have to curve this new piece like that too to fit around in there. So, so all right, I'm going to take this off and see if somebody can work some magic. All right, show you more. Okay, well we got our bracket made. So, and it will sit right down in here like this. And so we should be good to go there. We've got to get a longer bolt, and we're going to take a 3 8 pipe nipple, 3 inches long, and we're going to tweak that a little by grinding just a little off of it to make a spacer between the alternator bracket and the block. So, so Eric and Papa Bill went to get that bolt, longer bolt and the pipe nipple, so I'm going to come in here and start getting the wires made so that you can see what we're doing. Because, as I mentioned earlier, we have to have a wire that goes to the positive on the battery terminal, or the, yeah, the pop from the charging whirler giggy from the positive side of that to the positive side of the battery. And then I'm going to run one on the ground part of that alternator. I'm going to run one to the block and we're going to run one up and around and over to the actual battery. So, Because, you know, we're, we've had trouble with this wiring in this truck. It's old and it's corroded and so we're trying to bypass all that old wiring up under the dash and just get it so it charges. So, so we're going to crimp this down good. <clears throat> and then we're going to put some heat shrink on it. Cut a little of that off. Slide this over here. And she's a hot today. It's gonna be 90. And we're just gonna heat this up. It's why it's called heat shrink. And it'll shrink down. You wouldn't have to do this, but it protects a little bit from foreign elements getting in up under that terminal. Not a whole lot of protection.
Okay, there's that. And that makes it look, I already did the other end of it, so that makes it look like that. So, And this will run off of the relay that come, comes right off the battery terminal up around the firewall, and then this one end will hook onto the alternator. All right, show you more. Okay. So, what I got here is we got the two wires. I went ahead and marked, since I, it's both red, I, sh I mean, if I had some green wire, I would have used green wire, but I went ahead and marked this one ground. And then, of course, this other one is the hot wire. So, I'm going to feed them into this wire loom just to kind of clean it up a little bit. So, we'll get all this put in here and then I'll show you more. Alright, so there we got that. Kind of looks like that. And that should, and we can adjust this if we need to, however we need to. Alright, show you more. Okay, so let's get this thing woven back up in here. I'm actually just going to kind of run it up here where the other stuff's at. Just kind of clean it up in here a little bit. You wouldn't have to do this, but, you know, it needs to look somewhat decent. It also helps keep wires up out of the way so you know what's going on. And then we'll kind of zip tie that up there. Keep it up out of the way. All right, let me get some zip ties. Okay, let's get some zip ties going here. Yeah, I'm going to over here. And again, I'm just kind of putting that up on there like that so that it keeps it from falling down and getting in the way if you're working on something else. It's not like you would really have to do it. Oh, this big three-quarter ton thing is hard to, hard to get up in here. Okay. All right, that'll kind of hold that up out of the way. Let me get you up here right. See it better where you can see it better. Okay. Now you can see that this is our the hot wire coming from the new alternator. We're going to tie it in on this terminal. We'll clean those terminals up when we do that. It'll actually come in something like this, and then this one gets routed on up here, and we'll go into this ground on the battery. All right, and you can see over here, guys are working to get this new bracket and alternator put in with the spacer. They got a new bolt, and then we'll hook these wires up. Uh, the ground will go on the ground of the case of the alternator, and the hot wire will go on the terminal for the alternator, the positive terminal. So, and that way it's always going to be sensing 
battery voltage. It's not going to be sensing the weak, the weak and obstructed wiring that runs all up and all up in there and all that. So, all right, show you more. Now it is. Yep. Okay, so we got these wires run down here on this alternator. So I need to tighten them up. And of course, this is probably going to be metric because seven sixteenths won't work. And three eighths won't work. So, all right, show you. Be back in a minute. So that's going to be about it. Eleven, I guess. All right. So we, it's got to be one of these. Nine, eleven, or a ten. I'm going to go for a ten. Yep, that's what she is. Okay. All right. I don't need to break it off. Just snug it up. So. Yeah, the bottom bolt was probably metric too. That's probably why that uh, the wrench I was using on it, this one, That's the open know. end wouldn't work, but the closed end did. So, yeah. and being that this is an Ace Chrome Val Valdum, it does not say what country it was made in. So, anyway, it's probably China. Might not be too accurate. <laughs> All right, so now we got the brackets. The guys made the bracket. So now what we have to do is get the spacer in it, and they have painted it, so once it's dry, we'll do that. All right, show you more. What do you need? Yeah, a wrench for this. What size is it going to be? I don't know. It's going to be a half, I think. It's a half. It's probably metric. No doubt. No, it ain't. I don't believe it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that old Mexican wrench there, you can... Yeah. Make her tight. You can make it worse. Well, it ain't very tight. It ain't very snug. No, it ain't. So, loosen her up and let's tighten her up a little. Well, oh, is that up at the that's end? Up at the end right now. Right? Yeah, and we're kind of against that fuel line, too. Okay, so we may have to go get an inch smaller belt. That could do. And there's plenty of room for an inch smaller belt. Okay. Alright, let's do that. There goes the city. Must have a water line break somewhere. Okay, let's do a little upcap. Upcap? How about an update? <laughs> While we're waiting on uh, Papa Bill and Eric to go get that belt. So we cleaned the battery terminals. So, and that goes down to this little uh, terminal here that has a heat sensitive breaker built into it so that your lighting for the truck can still stay on if there becomes a problem inside. That's the way this is designed. Then your fusible length for the gauges in the cab. And if you watched the previous video, this is the wire that we replaced that was bad going through the terminal block. So I hooked the new wire that goes back in our wire loom that we made and then the other wire coming out of the wire loom runs over here and we've got it crimped in to the ground on the battery. The battery is also grounded to the motor and the battery is also grounded through this iffy looking ground wire to the frame of the vehicle. So we come in over here on our wire loom and we have our ground wire which is bolted to the bottom of the alternator. Since this is kind of a one wire universal alternator, it has a mounting bracket or a bolt that you can use like this one in the back. And then we've got our hot terminal coming to here. Now I took our voltmeter, tested our voltage across here. It's 12 volts and 26, 12.26 volts and I tested it back here at this terminal to the ground and it's 12.26 so we've got no restriction now if you remember from the other videos we had like 10 by the time it went up through the vehicle around in the dash back out through that mess over there and up and over and comes over here and went through the voltage regulator and that resistor block and came over here to the whirly spark uh, charging system, the old alternator, uh, we only had like 10.5 volts at best. So it was always sensing 
that it needed through, you know, we go back and tell that regulator back there, hey, we have got to charge this system. And that's why the uh, in the dash in there, that old analog charging uh, needle would just be pegged out charging all the time because this thing was running wide open trying to charge the battery that was not really that low and it just kept burning the alternators well it burnt more of the voltage regulators out I think we replaced three or four of those and then and we had replaced the alternator and then the alternator went out again and I, I'm, I'm thinking that it was just overworking it was running constantly wide open and it would just get red hot not red hot but you know it would get hot the unit so this has got an internal voltage regulator in it that senses battery voltage right here and since we're connected basically to the battery it should sense when the battery gets low and turn the charging portion on internally charge it back up and then shut it off so we've bypassed all of that mess back there and we don't need the resistor block because from the video before when we put in the HEI style distributor back there you know this poor girl looking more like a General Motors vehicle every day but uh, hey you know you gotta do what you gotta do to make this right uh, it was gonna be really almost impossible to find a decent dash uh, cluster and the wiring harness without buying it new because this vehicle is so old it is still available to parts but it was a lot cheaper to go buy a $59 alternator and of course they've had to get a belt now and had to get a, a bolt and a you know and a pipe fitting and some different things but it's still probably don't have a hundred dollars in it yet so anyway alright hopefully this is gonna work when they get back with the belt so I'll show you more alright go hit it Uh, I'd put enough in it, you shouldn't have to pump it. Pump it. Hit it, Elroy! <laughs> Power okay, now the battery's dead. Let me get my jump pack. <laughs> Alright, try it again. Okay, all wires are clear from the fans, I guess. I hope so. Turn it over? Yeah, turn it over. I saw him pull in the driveway. Did he? I told him to bring her on around here. So you just want to kind of crack it and let the pressure off. Well, we've uploaded the third one. I haven't checked. It. Well, they done kicked it off of it. Oh, they did. Yeah, and I can't tell you why because we're filming here, but because it'll kick this one off if I say it. So. 
Starts with a C. No, but it starts with a C and ends with a 19. So, oh. um, we're still half an inch. I, yeah, you're not bad. I burped the pressure off of it, so we should be good to go. Okay. All right. All right. So we got the old Dodge running. So uh, took three of us, but we got it. So all right. <laughs> see you next time. Bye. I was minding my own affair. Run to Lula, run. Hi, baby.